at 6.30 in the morning on October 7th, the state of Israel was attacked by Hamas terrorists. The casualties are extraordinary and unfathomable. This was an attack against civilians, and many were killed. To put this attack in perspective, to help Americans understand its dimensions, if it were to have happened in the United States, adjusted for our population, more than 30,000 Americans would have been killed. Old women, old men, three-year-olds, babies, mothers. The terrorists came and they slaughtered Jews in their homes. In fact, it was the worst episode of mass violence directed against Jews who were hunted and slaughtered at an industrial scale since the Shoah, since the Holocaust, since the Waffen SS pursued and machine gunned the Jews. Understand this. This was an attack by a terror organization a terror organization that exists for the purposes of denying the existence of the Jews and the Jewish state that seeks to eradicate it, that seeks to finish the work of the Nazi genocide. Hamas is not searching for peace or compromise. Hamas seeks only the destruction of the state of Israel. What did Hamas do with the billions of dollars of foreign aid that flowed into Gaza? Did they build schools, hospitals? Did they invest in technology? Did they build a port? Did they try to create an economy? Did they try to lift their people up out of poverty and misery? No. They built a cult of death, and they armed themselves to the teeth, readying for an attack aimed not at their freedom, but at the destruction of the Jews and the Jewish state. The creation of the Jewish state in 1948 stands as a profound moral achievement in the aftermath of the Holocaust and the near annihilation of the Jewish people, their eradication across much of Europe, where they had lived for millennia, contributing, building, champions of arts and science and literature. The last surviving peoples from antiquity, though, always hunted, always hated, always chased, until in 1948, their homeland was reestablished. And since then, Israel has had to defend itself over and over and over again from attack. But in a moment of time where normalization between former enemies was at hand, Iranian-backed Hamas struck. And what will come next is an escalation of the war, of the conflict, because no nation, no nation can tolerate what Israel has just endured. Every nation has a right to defend itself and its people. And that includes the United States of America. There is something missing from the reaction and the coverage in the United States about this tragedy. There have been no government officials who have yet stepped before a podium, looked directly into the camera, and addressed Hamas. In addition to the slaughter of Israelis, you have killed Americans. And it doesn't matter if they were wearing a MAGA hat or an AOC t-shirt. What matters is they're Americans. And those Americans have been killed, and those Americans have been kidnapped. And that is unacceptable. And the government of the United States of America must act. In war, 
innocent people die. But this war was visited on Israel by Iran, by Hamas, by the forces of barbarism and chaos. And now when the world watches the Jewish state defend itself, fight for the existence of its people, we will see the manifestation of virulent anti-Semitism. Already we see it. We see it in the protests in New York, sponsored by the Democratic Socialists of America. We see it in London. We see it in Sydney. And what we see is a very specific type of hatred, a very specific type of cancer. It takes a great deal of hate to look at a people and to blame them for their murder, to blame them for the people who hate them so much that they wish to see their existence cease. This is the nature of anti-Semitism, and we will see it play out. This attack where children were murdered was an act of barbarism and inhumanity. The Jewish people in the state of Israel have a right to exist, and their existence is an urgent moral matter. And that's why at this hour, the American flag is flying off the back of some of the most powerful naval vessels that have ever existed in the whole of human history that are steaming at flank speed towards the Israeli coast in the eastern Mediterranean. American power is present because Americans have been killed and because our ally Israel has been threatened, attacked, because Jews have been chased and murdered in the broad daylight and machine gunned down by 2023's version of the Waffen SS. Today they're called Hamas. They can also be called Hezbollah. It is almost a certainty that the war will escalate and Israel will be fighting on multiple fronts. On its northern border with Lebanon, on the West Bank, and on the Gaza Strip. This is the chaos that the Iranian terror state has fomented. It's what they hope for. They want this destabilization, and so does Vladimir Putin. The world stands on the edge of the abyss. The fire is drawing closer. Regional conflicts have the ability to merge and to become global in nature. The Russians are in Syria. The Russians are on the Black Sea. The Russians and Iran are yoked together, each other's principal arms suppliers. The United States of America must be strong. It must be firm. There was an American president who said something once. He said we would pay any price, bear any burden, support any friend, oppose any foe. This must be American policy in this urgent hour. And the President of the United States must speak clearly, unequivocally, and directly to the American people about the urgent, moral issue at hand. This war has come to Israel, not by Israel's choice. But now that it has come, Israel must fight it. They must defend the Jewish people. 
They must defend the Jewish state. And the United States must stand by Israel unequivocally. But not without conditions. There is something that must be said. There is an urgent warning inherent in this attack. It's a warning for the American people. There is something that has happened in Israel over the last eight months. Something that has happened also in the United States. There has been a great national distraction caused by politicians. Caused by people who are supposed to be the leaders. People who are supposed to serve the interests of the nation above their personal interests and above their ambitions. Bibi Netanyahu paralyzed his country, distracted it, caused mass chaos because he sought to strip the Israeli judiciary of its independence to protect himself from prosecution in corruption trials. The cost of preparedness, the chaos that this unleashed, was lost on nobody in Israel. Senior national security officials time and time and time again said the country is at its lowest state of readiness and preparedness ever. The country was divided. The country was looking inwards. All of the things that come when a faction loves its power and loves its ambition and loves its voice so much that they stop caring about the idea of the nation, its purpose. And when that happens, tragedy ensues. This is the price of inattention. This is the price of unpreparedness. It's war. It's death. It's suffering at an industrial scale. But now the war has come. And the only choice for Israel is to decisively win this war and to remove this threat, which can no longer be abided. And let's understand one last thing. De-escalation is an immoral proposition. And it is code for an anti-Semitism that posits that Jewish humanity is not worth defending, that the Jews exist at someone else's forbearance. The Jews will fight back. Israel will defend itself. And America will stand firm by her side because the lessons of history are clear. Never again wasn't a slogan. It was the most essential moral lesson in human history. There can never be another Holocaust. And the United States of America must see to it that there will not. The mistakes of our past, where we turned a blind eye, where the ship to St. Louis returned to Europe, sending its passengers, many of them, to their death. Let's remember these shameful moments and chapters, and let's say in this country, never again. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you never miss a video. Also, for more content just like this, please consider joining our Warning Premium community. You can find out more in the description below.